<laughs> Praise the Lord. Reggie Nugglehead here, a.k.a. Brother W. Jr. Brothers and sisters, we turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 5, and we'll be looking at verse 20. And it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, um, there was a local news where this man, a top executive, was caught in a, in a scandal. And when the reporter was giving this um, news, the reporter went on to say that this man fell from grace. You know, and equating falling from grace as falling into sin. When what happens, you know, truth be told, it's not so much that he, even though you fall into sin as a believer, you know, we fall into grace. So falling from grace isn't equivalent to falling into sin. It's when you fall into sin that what happens really is you fall into grace. During our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, um, the Bible describes our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is in John chapter 1 verse 14 as being full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 16, he's in his fullness we receive grace for grace. And when Jesus ministered to the rank sinners, the the prostitutes, the tax collectors of, of those days during his earthly ministry, he came and he healed them, he helped them, and he and you know through, through his grace had made them to be all that God had called them to be. You see, because grace is more powerful than sin. Because if sin is more powerful than grace, then Jesus Christ, who's full of grace and truth, who in his fullness would receive grace for grace, he would have been ineffective in his ministry. You know, God, he hates sin. And the reason why God hates sin is because he loves us. And because he loves us, sin, what it does to us, who he loves, it destroys our lives, it destroys our relationship, and it destroys our bodies. It destroys every area, every aspect, every arena, every affair, every avenue of our lives. Sin destroys. Sin is evil. But thanks be to God, God is more powerful than the sin that is destructive to us. You know, in Psalm chapter 103, verse 12, we see the psalmist David describes God is being able to cast our, our transgressions as far as the east from the west. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17, where the prophet Isaiah speaks about how God will cast all our sins behind our back, his back. Um, Micah chapter 7, verse 19, it, it's so powerful where, where, where God is demonstrated as how he's more powerful powerful than sin, where the prophet Micah describes God as subduing our iniquities and casting all our sins in the depths of the sea. And then the apostle John describing how, 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 how the blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than our sins by saying that the blood of Jesus Christ in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 was that by the blood of Jesus Christ the Son of God, the blood of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, cast us out, 
cleanses, excuse me, cleanses all our sins. So God is more powerful than the sin that is destroying us. And so, and, and we're in a position, there's nothing that we could do in and of ourselves to take care of the sin problems that is destroying us. There's no amount of good works. There's no amount about talking about it or talking against it or, or, or willpower that we could do in our part to get rid of this sin problem that's destroying us. It's, the, it's God and his grace that is going to take care of that sin problem that is affecting us. You know, the Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, sin is evil. Sin takes you further than you want to go. Sin takes you further than where you want to go, keeps you longer than you're willing to stay, and costs you more than you're willing to pay. Sin is evil. And it's the grace of God that's going to overcome our sins. Because we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. You know, you either fall in these categories. You're either a, 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 a sinner, a good, a good sinner, or you're a terrible sinner. You're either good at being a terrible sinner or you're terrible at being a good sinner. But, you, but we're all sinners. And we need God's grace to, to, to overcome our sins. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 tells us, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're no longer under the law, but you're under grace. And as the apostle Paul says in what we just read, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So when the law comes, when you're under the law, sin abounds. The sin that we can't take care of ourselves. When, when we try to take care of ourselves, whether through good works or, or, or willpower, the, 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 the sin under the law will abound. But well, watch this. In Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you because you're no longer under the law. Because under the law, the strength of sin is the law, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. But under grace, grace, where this is where, where, where God is, this is where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, where, where God is, is again, taking our, our transgression and casting it as far as the east from west, where he's casting it behind his back, where he's um, subduing it, again, casting into the, all of it to the depths of the sea under grace. And, and with the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin under grace. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And so God's grace is greater than sin. And and, and you think of uh, like a, like like the the, the sin. Of the whole world when it's compared sins of all mankind put together and you got and it looks like a like a like a flint of fire compared to God's grace that much more abounds and it, it comes like a tsunami a tsunami like tsunami tsunami like um, uh, uh, flood to that flint a fire of sin, and it just envelops it. Where, where sin abounds, that little small speck, that, and it could be um, or, or the sins of mankind, all of mankind, and then that tsunami-like flood of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's favor, of God's forgiveness, of God's love, just comes and whoosh, much more abound. So if if you get like thoughts from the enemy saying, you know, looking and saying, oh, look at what you did or what you thought or, or, or you know, how you, how you think you're going to get God's blessing. You know, you say, I saw what you did. I know what you're thinking and, and, and I know what you said. 
And just always remember who you are in Christ. Where, where, where sin abounds, grace much more, much more abounds. Whoosh! <laughs> Amen there, Jimmy. Amen. Grace much more abounds. Just like Jimmy just showed. Like he came like he came like whoosh. And stomped on that on that sin. Extinguish it. That's what God does. That's how you see yourself. So you don't so when you you're not you 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 when when you falling into sin. This is where now you're going to fall into grace. And where grace is, it much more abounds when it comes to sin. And, and when that happens, and when you realize that and know who you are in Christ, sin shall not have dominion over you because you're no longer under the law. You're under grace. And when you're under grace, this is where Again, you're going to experience his forgiveness, his love, his mercy, and you want to know who you are in Christ. So receive God's grace because it's undeserved, unmerited, and un unearned favor. You just receive it. When you believe it, you receive it, and it's yours. And then you're all who you are in Christ Jesus under his grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord space shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience. You may the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And not to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you forth in the presence of his God, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> we are no longer under the law. We are under grace. And where the where, and where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And remember, like that tsunami-like flood of grace that comes, it's gonna super abound, hyper abound on that thing that's coming against you. And all that stands is God's grace. And where you'll stand. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Agape love.